to join the circus. The art of Peter Blake is a riot of working class entertainment. The pleasures of rock music, the fairground, the circus. Turn my whole world upside down. Visiting Blake's studio is like stepping into a bygone age. A nostalgic soul, he's immersed in yesteryear's popular culture. This whole bit is folk art. Yeah, so it's fairground. Like this sort of this sort of thing, carousel, horses. Carousels, yeah. Um, um, tattoo. Well, I was just looking at these slabs of wooden meat and wondering <laughs> what they were. Uh, they're props for some. They're pantomime props. They're right? brilliant. Yeah. Blake channeled the populist, egalitarian spirit of English folk art and repurposed it for the modern age. In doing so, he paved the way for other young artists to break down the division between high and low culture by foregrounding his own personal hobbies, interests and experiences. In his painting Self-Portrait with Badges, Blake presents himself as an American teenager, wearing homemade jeans fashioned from overalls. In 1961, this seemed willfully eccentric. The idea of an adult covered with a lot of badges, you didn't exist. You... It seemed quite childlike, really. It was a childlike yeah. thing to yeah, have lots absolutely. of badges. Yeah, absolutely. I was becoming a child again, yeah. Yeah. Through popular culture, Blake found a way of making sense of his past the loss of his childish innocence in the Second World War, when at the age of just seven, he was evacuated to the countryside to the austere household of a woman called Mrs. Lofts. Every Sunday we went to the morning service, Sunday school and the evening service. And then in the evening, I suppose after the service, she'd send my sister and I out for a walk just to get rid of us. And one day I thought this is awful, I'm going to um, commit suicide. And I tried to strangle myself. And, and you, you know, and as a seven-year-old kid, you can't, you... So, um, yeah, it was pretty rough. That's dreadful. You were quite damaged by this. Yeah, I realised I was. In his wistful, autobiographical works from the early part of his career, Blake uses popular culture to evoke his stolen childhood. The figures, full of yearning, are based on members of his own family. These paintings simply reveal Blake's own childhood hobbies, and most important of all, his passion for music. So is this your sort of principal working space, then? Yeah. But this is still part of your collections of various things. Uh, well, I, w when, um, when LPs went out of favour, I kept mine. Can we have a leaf through and have yeah, a little I look? Yeah, I mean, this, this is Charlie Parker. And this, these just happen to be what's on the top. So Charlie Parker, Dave Brubeck. To Blake, pop music is more than just a theme of his work. Back in the 50s, it helped him define his entire artistic approach. Lawrence Alloway, who was an English critic, was having a dinner party one night and we were talking about what I was trying to do. And I said, I'm trying to make an art that works on, on the same level as music. So that if somebody listens to an Elvis Presley record, they could look at a picture by me of Elvis on the same level. And he said, what a kind of pop art. <laughs> Well, so you were there at the birth of the term. Not only well, were there, well, you inspired is... the birth of the term. Well, I claim I do. During a career spanning more than 50 years, Blake defined how we see many of our greatest musical heroes. His most famous pop creation, made with the artist Jan Harworth, transformed the Beatles from boy band to legend. But it's a painting he began in 1960 that first encapsulates his pop ethos. Oh, well, I got a girl. What a girl. I don't know what. To... Got a Girl is based on a song by the Four Preps, and it contains an actual record. The imagery of the painting 
acts out the lyrics of the song. We could even think of the entire composition as a rudimentary precursor to the music video. Blake's classic pop pictures broadcast a liberating message to younger British painters. No subject on earth was off limits. And as he approached 30, Blake, the so-called godfather of British pop, found himself at the forefront of a dynamic new scene. I guess I might have known. Six years after he'd enrolled there, the Royal College of Art welcomed a blazingly talented intake of students. 59 was that extraordinary year that was Hockney, Alan Jones, Beauchet, um, Pete Phillips, Pauline Boaty. Ken Russell's documentary film, Pop Goes the Easel, was broadcast on the BBC in 1962, launching the exciting new pop art movement to the nation. Street smart and hip, these young artists grew up with rock music and fashion, and they depicted celebrity, the space race, and consumer products with the same ease as their American counterparts. But the British approach was more painterly, less aggressive, and sometimes more complicated. Still, one thing they did share with the Americans was a knack for provocation. 